2017 Metropolitan Traffic and Parking Commission meeting. If you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Today I ask for an approval of the agenda. I have a motion. So moved. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes of the September 11th, 2017 meeting. They've been sent previously. Or do we have a motion to approve? So moved. We have a first. Is there a second? We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of consent agenda. Please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member or the, of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Consent agenda 1017. Item one, authorize truck restrictions over eight tons on McGavick Pike from Elm Hill Pike to Lebanon Pike, requested by council member Syracuse. Item two, authorize all way stop control at 22nd Avenue North and Osage Street, requested by Metro Public Works. Item three, authorize all way stop control on Drake's Branch Road at West Hamilton Road, requested by Metro Public Works. Item four, authorize no left turn from Ash Street westbound onto Lafayette Street, requested by Metro Public Works. Item five, modify highway 100 speed limits requested by council member Rosenberg. Between Temple Road and Chafin Drive from 45 miles per hour to 50, 40 miles per hour, between Harpeth River and Temple Road from 50 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. Item six, authorize valet zone on the south side, please note the change, on 401 Church Street at 4th Avenue North. The hours are 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. requested by Premier Parking for Deacon Restaurant. Authorized loading zone on the east side of 400 4th Avenue South at Koreans Veterans Boulevard requested by Bell Tower. It's, west. it's supposed to be east, I've been advised. Item eight. Authorize residential permit, permit, parking permit with a two-hour non-permit parking on the east side of South 10th Street at Russell Street. The hours are from 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. requested by Council Member Withers. Item nine, authorize loading zone on west side of Almond Street at Korean Veterans Boulevard requested by Bell Tower. Item 10, authorize a valet zone on 1904 Broadway at Lowell Avenue requested by Parking Management Company. This is for the Tavern Restaurant. Item 11, authorize valet zone at 211 12th Avenue South at Laurel Street requested by Parking Management Company. This is for the Finn and Pearl. Item 12, remove valet zone at 500 Church Street. It's only supposed to be 500 Church Street, re requested by Parking Management Company. That nears Puckett Grocery Store, correct? That's okay. Correct. All right. Okay. Are there any items on the consent agenda requiring further discussion, or can we move to vote on the consent agenda as presented? And you said the number seven had changed to the east side. Yes, that is correct, based on staff. Can I ask a question? Yes. On, yes, on the may. consent agenda, this McGavick Pike to Elm Hill, Elm Hill to Lebanon, is is there a weight limit on McGavick Pike all the way over to Briley or not? Currently not. We're researching that now at the request okay. of the council member. That's why I was asking. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 
Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. We have, we have a first and a second. All in favor, please vote by raising your right hand. Any opposed? The consent agenda passes. All right. Council Member Berkeley Allen, I know you're here for the next item under new business. Appeal, the four-way stop denial at the intersection of 25th Avenue South and Ashwood Avenue. Council Member Allen, would you like to step forward and please? There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, thank you again for your service and for the opportunity to speak. I represent District 18, which includes uh, this intersection at 25th and Ashwood. Um, it, I know that you've done the volume counts and based purely on volume counts, it, the re engineering recommendation is not that there is not a need based on volume counts to have a four-way stop sign there. Um, I've been hearing for six years from neighbors who um, have been begging to have this stop sign here to um, basically to deal with a confusion and a visibility issue. 25th Avenue comes um, across and the Ashwood comes down a hill so that the visibility is not particularly good as you're approaching that intersection. Um, and in addition, there's a parallel street sunset that's essentially the twin intersection, and it does have a four-way stop. So there's just, there's just confusion created on 25th Avenue of I stopped at 25th, uh, and now I'm stopping here, but when you're coming down Ashwood, you feel like you should stop, but you're not sure that the other one does. So it, the neighbors have seen so many near misses, even though the statistics don't necessarily show a lot of crashes. Um, anecdotally, I have heard from many neighbors how, how frequently um, they have been scared witless um, at the possibility of, of a wreck just because of the confusion there. So I would ask you to consider this on the basis of visibility and, um, and simply just a lack of clarity of, of what the, the traffic on Ashwood should be doing, um, and, and um, despite the fact that the traffic counts don't necessarily warrant it from the standpoint of how much traffic there is on 25th, that um, from a safety standpoint, it would be very beneficial. So I'd ask you to give it serious consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ma'am, are you here to speak on this issue? And I see you brought your children with you for civic, for civic lessons. If you would like to come and state your name. Is there a map that can be shared? Yes. Corby, do you have a map of this intersection, please? Okay. And just please state your name and address for the record, please, sure. ma'am. My name is Jessica McDuffie Massey, and I live at 2614 West Linden Avenue. And these are my daughters, Bronwyn and Taryn, who are getting a civics lesson here today because they're out of school. So... Mm -hmm. This is what they get to do when they don't go to school. <laughs> um, I am here on behalf of the neighborhood and the Hillsborough West End Neighborhood Association, as well as um, just the general neighbors who live near this intersection. I believe that many of them wrote you emails and letters. We certainly asked them to, because when the neighborhood board hears so much concern year after year, we want them to then address that towards y'all. Um, I know it was denied based simply on traffic volume. Just to reiterate what Berkeley said, it's not about the volume here. It is about visibility, about confusion. Um, and the personal story I would like to relate is that I mean, I travel this intersection on a daily basis, taking this one to Aiken, which is our neighborhood elementary school, uh, going to Kroger, et cetera. Um, after we had a meeting regarding 25th Avenue and we addressed the concern here at the intersection of Ashwood and 25th and we requested the traffic count to look uh, at the possibility of a stop sign, Several of my neighbors and I, about a month and a month and a half ago, were walking back home along this street. We stopped. We're standing there. We are looking at the intersection right there. <laughs> and we see a car come flying down the hill, which is what the cars are wont to do because you're on a slope. And so they're speeding up as they're heading down. The cars that have the stop sign on 25th, you have to scoot out. Because, I mean, we 
you know, we live in a neighborhood where everyone parks on the street. So you have to scoot your car out into the middle of the intersection to be able to see whether you can either cr even cross at the stop sign. So this young girl comes flying down the hill. She sees us, she slows down to ask a question and she goes, oh my God, did I just run a stop sign? She thought it is your natural inclination. Mentally, you think there should be a stop sign here. I just ran a stop sign. People stop as if there is a stop sign on a regular basis. The worst part of the story for me is that I appreciated her asking, but on the opposite corner that you see there, there were two young children playing. There was a young boy pulling his sister in a little scooter, and they were about to cross where there is not a stop sign. And that is why we are asking for this stop sign, because of that terror on a daily basis that something tragic will occur at this intersection. Okay. So. Ms. Massey, thank you for coming today and for bringing your children. Thank you. Well, they're happy to be here. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes, Ms. I'd like to move to approve. We have a first. Is there a second? We have a first and a second. Is there any further discussion? Chip, I just have one question to ask. When we do four-way stops, are we putting crosswalks into these intersections? Sometimes we mark the crosswalks. I mean, of course, there's legal crosswalks there right. by code, um, but we have to make sure the ramps and the crossings are compliant. You can have certain slopes. So to answer your question in too many words, yes, if we can meet the compliance. Okay. Because it looks like that would be an excellent idea at this intersection. Correct. The thing so we have first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Of, aye. aye. Okay. All, any opposed? Okay. Your four-way stop sign has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is Council Member Davis here? If he's not, I'd like to defer this item because I know this is well, of interest to you. Ah. He walked in the door. Ah, okay. There you go, my magic. So council, council member, you're right on time. <laughs> All right. Okay. The next item is discussion regarding the recent decision to remove an all-way stop at Cleveland Street and North 9th Street. Council member Davis had requested this to be on the agenda. Council member Davis. Good afternoon, thank you for coming. Uh, good afternoon everybody, thank you for volunteering your time. I understand the logic of changing the stop. Um, my oldest brother is an engineer and sometimes engineers, you know, they're very logical in their assessments. However though, the amount of community pushback, I've had community members that are in support, but everywhere I go, this is what I hear about. I'm not on fall break with my family because of having to be here. I've had over 300 phone calls. I have a new phone. This thing was, this thing has, has run off the hook. Every time I go to church, I hear about this, in, this intersection. Anytime I go anywhere, every neighborhood association because a lot of us go home off of Ellington or come down West Eastland and it goes into my Greenwood, my Maxwell, and even my McFerrin and Cleveland neighbors. And one day there was a, and with the bridge closure and with the Titans game one time, Sunday after church, the lines are awful. And I don't know why or how, I understand. And I know there are people that are for this, but I can't take the phone calls anymore. I mean, I'm being very honest and just very plain here. I, I, am, I am overwhelmed. And, and I know Public Works, you know, I, they have been very helpful in trying to facilitate. And Mr. Word, thank you for everything you've done to, to help answer questions. Thank you, Mr. Gossage. You know, thank you, Mark Sternavant. Um, it's, you know, I'll just be real with you. I am tired. And even today, I got 20 phone calls, you know, with this. 
and they're killing them. A lot of the folks that live around those areas, especially the ones on North 9th and Hart, um, some are older people, a lot of older people, and some are just, I'll be honest with you, we put that four-way stop there a long time ago because they're complaining about speeders and traffic and all kinds of things. And it has really just caused a lot of people just to pull their hair out. And right now, I understand, and next time, I mean, I know there's gonna be some community meetings, you know, going from neighborhood to neighborhood, but I have five associations that use that. And when my, um, when some of the ones that don't only meet, I have one association besides those five that meet quarterly, and it's on their agenda. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, you know, this is almost as bad as when, the, when they try to put that waste transfer station. No, it's not bad like that, but it's just the amount of volume and phone calls, you know what I mean, and what's going on that I don't have the bandwidth. So please reverse this. I mean, and, and before changes like this happen, I know that there'll be some community meetings so people know, and so it's not a, a shock, but you're all the traffic experts. You know, I mean, I know no one prepared for this. You know, the kind of, not prepared, prepared for the, the pushback from this. But, you know, I just can't take it. I, and I'll be, just be honest. Okay. You know what I mean? And it's, it, it, it please change this back. Right. And if I can get a deadline where you can start, put the signs back first. You know, um, you got people making weird stops. You know, and another place, I have a 16-year-old daughter that's just started to drive. My wife doesn't want her going, going down that, that intersection, you know, because of the change. I know, thank you for the warning um, flashers on each end, you know what I mean? Thank you. But I'm getting, I'm, 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 I'm getting torn up over this. Well, thank you very much for coming today. Chip, um, what's so the staff response, please? Sometimes we get a little ahead of ourselves, and um, you know, you know, like you heard at the last, the last case, where the numbers don't always tell the story, and so the councilman is accurate with his uh, analysis of um, the passion in the area and and their uh, desire to have their always stop back. So what we've discussed is putting the stop signs back in place. Um, reanalyzing it, meet with the community, meet with the council member, um, go back to go as they'd say in Monopoly and, and the starting line and then and start with the councilman and re-review this case. What we don't like to do in traffic world is flip-flop between, flip between regulatory conditions. But with the, with the message boards we have out there on site, with the community word going around, this commission and this TV, it, we can get the word out to flip the signs back. So my recommendation, along with the councilman, is to put the signs back, and then we'll come back before you someday if we ever decide to remove them, if we ever decide to put a signal there, whatever it is, it's still your guy's decision. But with this testimony, I'm siding with him and saying, let's put the signs back and, and re-review it. All right. Do we need a count, uh, legal counsel? This is a discussion item. Can we make a, a motion to reinstate the stop signs? Placement of stop signs is within the things that the um, commission has authority over in the charter. Yeah, I think John. What John is wondering is that the way the wording on the agenda is. Is that enough public notice? Oh yeah, we're good. This is a regularly scheduled meeting, and okay. the Open Meetings Act has kind of relaxed requirements um, for for notice. Um, on meetings that are, are, are regularly scheduled, oh. um, although special okay. meetings you still have to have. All right. Is there any uh, commission member who'd like to make a motion on this? Well, I'd like to make a couple statements on this one because um, I actually live at a block away. Um, so I think, and I've been to m many of the community meetings that uh, Councilman Davis has, has discussed. Um, and I think just for a little bit of clarity for everybody else, um, from attending the community meetings, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Okay, I can do that. Sure, yeah. Um, okay, then yeah, I'll just share my insight as a neighbor and then recuse myself. But um, 
A couple things to keep in mind is one, they did temporarily restripe it to have bike lanes, which is in the city's bicycle pedestrian plan and part of the mayor's complete streets executive order for all streets that are being repaved. Um, and the concerns I heard from my fellow neighbors were with the stop sign, the traffic was backing up as the councilman talked about. So we took the stop sign out and now the concern is with safety, which I totally agree with cars are definitely fly off of Ellington Parkway. And so I do think it is a broader discussion about the striping of the street that is involved with the stop sign. So I do think, I hope we can be involved in that broader discussion because I think it's a lot more complicated than yes or no on a stop sign. Um, and I would urge everyone to think not only about the convenience of people who are driving, but also the safety of people who have to cross the street and how that we make that a, a common, you know, safe for everyone. And if that's a stop sign or a crosswalk or a light, and then also making sure we're keeping in mind that this is the only access for bikes across Ellington Parkway in about a mile in either direction. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Thank you for your comments. Any other commissioners have any comments? I've got one statement. Councilman Davis did ask about when could the stop signs be put back if you guys were to vote that way. Um, by charter, it is a five day waiting period, but we'll have the signs in our hand on that fifth day to go out there. So I just want you to be able to relay that. Thank you. And just as a quick suggestion, I know that we can't control what TDOT does, but when TDOT closes certain intersections and bridges to, especially at a really important, and so no one can predict or has a crystal ball, but you know, you know, next time before we make a change, we may want to look at when think bridges are closed because especially where that location is, when the bridges are closed, especially now, when you, you know, it increases, I mean, that section, you know I mean, things were backed up. And then when you have drivers who are used to the four-way, and then we changed it, and then you have drivers who are flying, and then people think, well, why aren't they stopping? There's a four-way stop. You know, it gets a little confusion and confusing. And when you add new drivers, and then you add people who, who've been there driving forever, and the people who are using it as a shortcut, you know, because of the, because the bridges are down, you know, or this construction, I think it's after six, after 8 p.m. they stop and before six and it's shut down all weekend on certain weekends. Yeah, I mean, it depends on TDOT's permitting, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's usually off peak for sure, off rush hour. Yeah, but. Oh. Hi, John, <clears throat> I'll make a motion to uh, replace the stop signs. We have a first, is there a second? Second. Second, all right. All in favor, please vote by raising your right hand. Any opposed? And let the record know there's one recusal. Okay. See, yes, ask, yes. Do we, um, Chip, is there something that will notify people that the stop signs are back? I mean, will there be something? Well, I assume the councilman wants to go on fall break now, but <laughs> between he and I and Benny and all, we will, we will do our best to get the word out. And we have, like he said, we have what they call I'll, VMSs, variable message I'll, boards out there. I'll do it. Okay. And, and we'll post it out there. And I'll send an email out to my leaders tonight and just and let them know. And if we can look at meetings about the striping. Yeah, and then, then all of us need to get together about that other part that Commissioner Kern mentioned. Yeah. It, it does seem like, Chip, many of these issues that come up, there are multiple related issues besides just whether you have a stop sign or a traffic light, but you know exactly how the striping right. is done, et cetera. That it's, a, it's kind of amazing when, when you do a road diet or whatever you want to call it, the behaviors change, the volumes can change, the multi-modes can change, the different modes of transportation show up, and now you, you're retiming a signal or you're removing or putting in a stop sign. So yeah, it all goes together. Okay. Officer? I'm moving we adjourn the meeting. We are adjourned, everyone. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.